Hi-ho, Tudor-minded people. It's Philadelphia Carrie for Tudor Time Machine. The word I share with you this week is cocker. A font, dear ones. You have been on tenterhooks to hear more of my news about R.B., the famous actor I encountered in the tiring room of the Globe Theatre. I release you from the rack, my listeners. I love and, dear ones, share in my joy essence. I am loved in return. Yes, yes, I hear the tumult, the hurly-burly cries. He is too low for thee, O lofty Lady Philadelphia. Thou should cocker no swain lower than a duke or a baron. An actor is too low to kiss your galouche. And yet, Richard Burbage has kissed my lips, my swanish throat, and even my dainty duckies. I keep nothing from you, my friends. It was thus. I found myself again in the tiring room of the globe. The particulars of how I came in disguise from court without detection, and whom I bribed to open the theatre's back door to gain admittance to the tiring room, I shall not waste breath to tell. Only know this. Venus, the great goddess of love, favoured me to find Master Burbage waiting for his next entrance as the fox Valpone in Master Johnson's play. I feign to be startled and alarmed. <laughs> Arby is not the only fine actor. In a sudden passion, the man fell at my feet, hailed me a goddess, an apparition, and deftly playing on the lines Ben Johnson wrote for Valpone, he said, Dear lady, what should we do but cocker up our passion and live free to all delights our fortune calls us to? Anon, hearing his cue, he ran onto the stage. Upon his exit he returned to me and took me in his arms, then back out again for the last scene. Then the curtain fell, and amidst the thundering applause, he and I slipped away from the theatre, to cocker our joys. Cocker, how now, Tudor Files, what think you? If you're new here, I'm Gage. I'm Jessica. And we're here with Philadelphia Carey for Tudor Word of the Week. Don't miss a word and listen to the Tudor Time Machine Story Project. So diverting. And I pray bid you tell a ningle and ring the little YouTube bell. Tudor Files, thank you for listening. Every one of you has the wit of Rosalind and the heart of Cordelia. And don't be shy about writing to Philadelphia on YouTube or suggesting words because we always love hearing from our listeners. How do you spell our Tudor word of the week, Philadelphia? It is spelled C-O-C-K-E-R. Despite what you may be thinking, Tudor Files, this is not a 16th century slang word for sex. To be fair, Tudor Files, within the context of Philadelphia's story and also the way the word sounds, it's a very easy mistake to make to assume this is a word for sex. But actually, cocker means to indulge in or to pamper. So I was wondering, do you think the name cocker spaniel came from a breed of spaniel that was particularly worthy of pampering? <laughs> oh, all doggies deserve pampering. <laughs> Actually, I think Cocker Spaniel in that use has something to do with hunting. Dogs hunting? My ningles, Jessica, engage. What rubbish do you talk of? Let us speak of my love, my galant, my amour. I would cocker in speech of this wondrous burbage. Avant, let us discourse of my love. All right, then. I'm curious, Philadelphia. You say that Burbage was playing Valpone at the Globe. That's by Ben Johnson, right? But Burbage was the lead player of the Kingsman, and Shakespeare was their playwright. Dear Gage, I shall tell you. Master Shakespeare is indeed the main playwright for the Kingsman, the company that, as I have told you, was formerly the Lord Chamberlain's men under the patronage of my dear brother, Sir George Carey, until they won the favour of King James and became the Kingsman. Master Shakespeare writes all his plays for this company, and always has. But that is an unusual agreement. 
The other well-known writers in London, Ben Johnson, John Fletcher, John Marsden, et al., write plays for different companies. So Shakespeare's position as a sort of in-house playwright, that's not the norm. So from what I've read, it wasn't. It seems like all these other playwrights worked for everybody. So Shakespeare's position was different because as well as being a playwright, he was also an actor. I think he started as being an actor. So he was an actor with the company and thus he was a shareholder. So I think his being a shareholder was the result of his being an actor, not because he was a writer. Then is now. In the entertainment business, writers never get the credit they deserve. I do not understand of what you speak, the entertainment business, but I tell you that Ben Johnson may write a witty play, and my R.B. played the sly fox Valpone to perfection. But Master Johnson is not an amiable fellow. He is a ruffian, trained as a bricklayer. Well, maybe he is not the best person to be a company member. Well, we don't know what Shakespeare's personality was, obviously, but contemporary accounts of Ben Jonson make him sound like an extremely difficult person. He was always in lawsuits and feuds. He had a big theatrical feud with all these other playwrights. And then he worked with Inigo Jones at the court, and he was also in a big feud with him. He was in and out of jail. He killed a man in a duel. I mean, his plays are so much more satirical in Shakespeare's. Valpone is a city comedy that takes place in Italy, and it's about a swindler, Valpone, and his crony, Mosca, and how they con everyone. Yeah, sure, it ends up with Valpone and Mosca getting their comeuppance, but eh, it's kind of weak. And, you know, that was sort of the convention that they had to get a comeuppance. But you don't feel like Johnson's heart is in that part of the play. But, you know, Ben Johnson and Valpone has one of my favorite 16th century insult lines. He says, these turdy, facey, nasty, patty, lousy, farticle rogues. <laughs> yes. When my RB spoke those lines, the crowd roared with laughter. He played Valpone to perfection. The other cast members were Condell as Mosca, Sly as Voltaire, Hemmings as Sir Pole, Lowen as Peregrine, and Cook as Bonario. I guess Shakespeare was just off writing his next play and couldn't be in it. Historians think this production of Valpone was in March 1606. So according to the chronology of the plays as we know them right now, Shakespeare could have been putting the final touches to Macbeth or Lear or starting on that little thing called Antony and Cleopatra. I guess he was busy. Philadelphia, you said that R.B. wooed you by playing with Volpone's lines using our word of the week. Can you give us Volpone's actual lines? With pleasure. In the first scene of the play, Valpone, my R.B., speaks of how devious and clever he is to swindle and cheat the rich men around him. Though he already has more riches than he needs, he enjoys his stratagem so much he cannot desist from them. He says... What should I do but cocker up my genius and live free to all delights my fortune calls me to? Ah, the usual story. The rogue gets too greedy and then he falls. Well, I am no rogue, and neither is my beloved R.B., so we shall cocker up our joys and never take a fall. Our love shall be eternal. Okay, Philadelphia. You doubt it? Well, let's just say my worldview is more Johnsonian than Shakespearean. I'm a bit of a cynic. Ah, well, I leave you to cocker in your dark visions while I go to my love, R.B. and the delights of fashion. So give ye Tudor files, add some 16th century sauce to your vocabulary with cocker. Listen in next time. Don't miss a word. Subscribe on YouTube and give me a like.